Scattered across the globe are grisly testimonies to the capacity humans have for violence towards each other. From the cannibal pits of Herxheim, maybe evidence of a last-ditch effort to avoid starvation in the wake of ecological change, to the cemetery of Jebel Sahaba, which could be the earliest evidence of war in the archaeological record, although that's debated, to dozens of severed heads buried beneath the foundations of Shimao, interpreted as being some sort of a ritual based around human sacrifice, which would become common very shortly under the Shang Dynasty, it shows that Homo sapiens have a long history of violence. But we are not the only species of hominid to exhibit such tendencies. Discovered in a cave in the Atapuerca Mountains in Spain is a skull, which appears to show evidence of deliberately inflicted trauma by a weapon, and because the skull is dated to approximately 430,000 years before present, Archaeologists have interpreted this skull as belonging to the earliest known murder victim discovered thus far. The archaeological site was discovered in the mid-20th century due to the construction of a railway through the mountain range, and subsequent digging, first begun in 1964, made it clear very quickly that this site was rather extensive. There are several individual focus sites within what is collectively a cave network, showing evidence of use by multiple hominids notably Homo heidelbergensis, probably Homo erectus with that particular find possibly showing evidence of cannibalism, Homo antecessor, which also seems to show evidence of cannibalism, and Homo neanderthalensis, or Neanderthals. Deep within this cave system, accessible only through narrow tunnels and then through a vertical shaft approximately 40 feet in length, is Cima de los Huesos, the Pit of Bones. To date, there are over 6,000 fragments of bone that have been discovered in this pit, and based on jaw bones and portions of skulls, there are estimated to be at least 20 individuals here, possibly as many as 29 or 30. These are believed to be the remains of Homo heidelbergensis, with a date range for the bodies spanning between 781 and 126,000 years ago. Cranium 17 pieced together from 52 different fragments, dates to about 430,000 years ago, and it shows what looks to be evidence of trauma above the left eye socket. The initial study on this skull states that it belonged to a Neanderthal. However, because that was published in 2015, the subsequent decade has led to more digging, and now that Cima de los Huesos is considered to be the single largest find of Homo heidelbergensis in the world, that identification is starting to change, although there's some argument that maybe these were archaic Neanderthals. It's not entirely certain as of yet. So why is this thought to be a victim of homicide? And furthermore, what are all of these bodies doing in this pit? Well, it's not like Cranium 17 is the first evidence of what would be considered a traumatic injury. There is plenty of archaeological evidence that indicates cutting or things of that nature generally after death, but in terms of lethal injuries that were received while the individuals were alive, there are two other major examples in the archaeological record. The first is a Neanderthal known as Shanidar III, which shows evidence of something, likely a projectile point, penetrating the ninth rib and damaging the bone. The second example is the Homo sapiens known as Sungir I, which received trauma, also thought to have been inflicted by a projectile point, this time to the first thoracic vertebrae. Both of these injuries resulted in death, but they don't seem to have been immediate, since both bones show evidence of healing. Evidently, though, these were wounds which did not mend properly. Cranium 17 stands out in the archaeological record, then, because this appears to be the first solid evidence of a traumatic injury which immediately caused death. And the location of the wounds, on the face above the left eye socket, indicate intentional violence, whereas the other two major examples, Shanidar 3 and Songir 1, could have been attempted murder, but archaeologists point out that due to the locations of the wounds, they could also have been hunting accidents. That being said, the archaeologists who work on this site point out that, because the body was in this pit, while it could hypothetically be possible that the wounds were received when the body was deposited, or due to something falling onto the body while in the pit, the placement and size of the wounds essentially rules this out. It's extremely unlikely that such an injury, like a falling rock, would be so precise. It's also been advanced that this individual had fallen, but that has largely been ruled out because the pattern of Cranium 17's injuries don't match what an injury resulting from a fall 
especially on the skull, tends to look like. Humans, and hominids in general, attempt to break their fall, so typically when an injury does occur, it's on the side of the skull, and that trauma tends to be associated with big fractures, not localized acute damage like this. So because of these objections, archaeologists lean towards a deliberately inflicted blow as an explanation for the trauma. Further reinforcing that interpretation is a three-dimensional model of the skull that was created, and which shows fracture patterns on the skull that are associated with long-term drying and decaying of bones. So essentially what the model depicts is that the vast majority of the fractures on the 52 pieces of bone that comprise the skull are curved and straight pattern fractures, and oftentimes those fractures occur at right angles, oftentimes with jagged edges. The two wounds above the left eye socket do not appear to match this pattern. They're clearly defined with smooth edges, and they show evidence of stress fractures spreading out from a central point. In other words, the pattern of the fractures indicate that the bone was struck by some instrument. It occurred while the bone was still covered with tissue, and it does not show any evidence of healing, unlike the Shanidar 3 and Songhir 1 injuries. What we are looking at then is probably the oldest murder currently known. That is to say, these injuries were deliberately inflicted to the left side of the face, the angle and location of which means that another individual very likely swung the object in question with their right hand towards the individual that we know as Cranium 17. So then, what is this murder victim doing in the pit of bones? Did the murderer stash the body here? Well, not quite. Located among the bodies is a hand axe, one of the most ancient types of tools and used by multiple hominids. Their function is still debated, and it's possible that they had multiple uses, not strictly limited to utilitarian functions like chopping meat. This particular example is known as Excalibur, and it is made of red quartzite. Because it was found amongst thousands of bone fragments, an interpretation that's been advanced is that this is evidence of Homo heidelbergensis being cognizant of, well, death, essentially, and possibly having some conception of an afterlife. Basically, Excalibur is interpreted as being a funerary offering for a dead individual, what we would later come to understand as ceremonial burial. Cranium 17 could be interpreted, then, as having been murdered, and then placed in a burial shaft which saw use for hundreds of thousands of years. Is that interpretation correct, though? Well, that particular bit is still up in the air, but as digging at the Puerca continues, and as anthropology as a whole continues to advance, that question may eventually be able to be answered.